Okay, I'm moving on to part C of that same question. So we've done our screen to find our suppressors of variegation, and now we want to find out how many genes have we found mutated in our screen. So this is going back to the first part of the course where we're doing our mean analysis. So the first thing we do when we um, isolate our new mutations, we want to know if they're dominant or recessive. And in order to figure that out, we're going to cross our mutants to the wild type and look at the resultant phenotypes. Uh, in a this is a complementation test, in a sense. If the wild type, if the, this, the cross, the um, heterozygotes, give a wild type phenotype, then that means your mutation is recessive. And by converse, if you cross it and you get the mutant phenotype, then your mutation is dominant. And so in this particular screen that you did, you I identified five recessive mutations and three dominant mutations. And in this question, we want to know what are the um, minimum and maximum number of genes that can be defined by these mutations. So for simplicity's sake, I took out the dominant mutations from the table to make it a little less complex. There were, granted, a lot of different crosses involved. So if we were to look at this kind of pared down table, we could see that if we cross wild type to any of our mutants, then those heterozygotes would have a um, they would have the wild type phenotype. But if we cross all of our mutants together, we can ask if they either complement or if they fail to complement. So if you get complementation, as is the case in wild type, then that means that the mutations are in different genes. But if you get a failure to complement, that means that they're in the same gene. So for mutant 2, for example, if you cross it to mutant 3 or mutant 5 or mutant 7, you get the, the wild type phenotype. That means that S2, the suppressor 2, is a mutation in a gene that is probably the same gene as mutant 6. So since they fail to complement, we would put them in the same complementation group, and we'll group 2 and 6 together as being mutations in the same gene. So if we go through the rest of the table, we can see that mutant 3 fails to complement with um, mutant 7, and um, what you'll also notice in this table is that the mutant 5, and then these are all suppressors, mutant 5 complements both 6 and 7. And so this means that the, um, there is, it's in its own complementation group, because we haven't found another mutant that um, fails to complement. So here we can say minimally we have amongst our recessive mutations, we have three different genes that are defined by these mutations. So the question wants to know, amongst all of our mutations, how many complementation groups could we have? So it's possible we don't know these mutations in S1, S4, and S8. They could be mutations in any one of these genes, but we wouldn't know because they gave this dominant phenotype and we couldn't use them in the complementation test. So they could all be alleles of any of these three genes, and if that's the case, then the minimum number of complementation groups or, or genes defined in this, this analysis would be three. Now, it's also possible that these mutations here all are in different genes, even different than two, six, three, seven, and five. And if that was the case, then that means that we would have an additional S1, S4, and S8 would all be in different genes, so we'd have one, two, three, four, five, six different groups, which could um, give us a, a maximum number of six possible um, genes that could be defined by our mutants.